Hey, Washington football fans. Welcome back to my little series here on positional needs for the draft. Today, we're going to be going over the tight end position. Now, I know we just picked up Samus Reyes, but he's only the second tight end on the the team as we're looking at it now. So, I, while I do have all the confidence in the world that 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 kid's going to be he's going to be a great player with just his blend of athleticism and his drive and determination to be successful. I do think that it's a a position we should address in the draft later on and uh as it stands with him and Logan Thomas, we kind of got two super athletic guys on the team. So I think we should look for a different type. So I'm going to be looking away from like the jumbo receiver types. Not really interested in the Brevin Jordans, the Briley Moores, the Kenny Yaboas, or Colin Granson. Although Colin Granson does kind of remind me of Jordan Reed a lot. Just the way he moves and everything. He reminds me of Jordan Reed. But uh, I don't know. I think we kind of need a like a do-it-all tight end or a great blocker or maybe just a great contested catcher. But I'm going to tell you about some of the guys that I think show a lot of promise that would fill that need. So let's check them out. So the first guy I like here and kind of unquestionably the, the second best tight end in the draft after... Kyle Pitts, who's just an insane alien, like there's nobody ever been like him in the position, but the next best guy, I think, is Pat Fryermuth from Penn State. Now, that guy is everything we need. I mean, he's not, you know, like that crazy, like, special type that that uh Pitts is but this guy is all right let's go over his stats first first of all he's 6'5 260 pounds he had 92 receptions for 1185 yards and 16 touchdowns this guy is he just he shows confidence at the position that's great He's a former basketball player, but he does everything well. Like, everything you'd ask for out of a tight end, he does great. He's a good blocker. He's a great contested catcher. He's got good speed. Everything about him is great. He plays the slot in the slot, at the wing, in line, everything you could ask for from a tight end. And once he gets the ball in his hand, he's nasty. Like, He's got probably the best stiff arm I've seen at tight end since Gronkowski. I think that's why they call him Baby Gronk. I mean, he trucks people, stiff arms him, runs through him. People jump on his back. He's dragging him along to the end zone. But on top of that, he's got he's got great technique and route running, and he's got some impressive shake in his brakes. Like, at the top of his brakes, he'll hit him with a little double move and like, he's very impressive, I think. If it wasn't for Kyle Pitts coming out that's just a freak of nature, everybody, this would be tight end one. But luckily for us, I think this could push him back down. Let's push him down to mid-second round, which, I mean, that would be great for us, but I don't think we should spend that early a pick. But if we did, this would be the guy right here. I mean, honestly, with... With everything he could, if somebody's looking for a tight end and Pitts is gone, he could be a first rounder. If that's like a big, if you've got the luxury pick out there and you're going to take a tight end in the first, this is the guy after Pitts. But as it stands, I think he ends up as a mid second round pick, which is kind of too early for us. But I just want to talk to talk about him. I think he's really impressive, and if we did go tight end it in the second round, I would not be mad with. At, at getting him I just like well uh, if that's what you need then I guess that's what Scott Turner needs my next guy is 
Tommy Tremble from Notre Dame. Now, a lot of us Washington fans are big on this guy. He's a monster in the blocking game. He's He's got a lot of like great traits that that could show up at the next level. But everything else other than his blocking, which I mean, he's far and away the best at Everything else is a projection because he had almost no production at the position as a receiver. He's a vicious blocker that loves contact, and he's a great athlete. He's got a great burst off the snaps. So that leads to him having potential as a pass catcher. But all of that's a projection. Now, I love the kid, but it's all a projection. He's almost more of a fullback type of player, but his athleticism leads to him having real upside as a pass catcher. You know, he could be a he could be a high end tight end, but we just don't know. So, I mean, if he gets there to like the fourth round, late third, early fourth, that's where I'd be comfortable taking him. And I think we could develop him to be, you know, everything he's meant to be. I mean, we did it with Logan Thomas. So uh, I really think that that we could get the best out of him. And at the very least, he becomes that third type of tight end that we need. He's that, you know, hard-nosed blocker, almost fullback type. So, yeah, I mean, Tommy Tremble would be great at the end of the third, early fourth. Then we're on to Hunter Long from Boston College. He's 6'5", 253 pounds. He's got 33-inch arms. He had 89 receptions for 1,297 yards and 9 touchdowns. Now, he's not a great blocker, but he's got all the tools. He's got the long arms. He's got the feet. Like He could be a good blocker. He just hasn't showed up there yet. But he's got great speed at his size. And after Kyle Pitts, I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's got the best catch catch radius in the draft. Now, I'm going to talk about some guys later that are bigger, longer, taller guys. I still think that Hunter Long has showed that he has the next best catch radius in the draft. He's a great contested catcher. Like most of his catches, like some people are giving him knocks on his physicality, but most of his catches were in traffic. Like that's just what he did. He made his quarterback look good. I mean, he caught balls that just weren't, they they shouldn't have been caught. Like, he made his quarterback look a lot better than he was. When the ball's in the air, he knows exactly where it is, and he puts himself he puts himself in a position to get it. Now, I really like this guy, and I think he's great at like a third or fourth rounder, but I think other teams are going to see what he does. I think this guy's a flat-out third rounder. We could take him with our second pick in the third round, and I think we'd be perfectly fine with it. Uh, yeah, like Hunter Long is just, it's, it, there's not a lot to talk about, but he just does those things you kind of want the tight end to do as a receiver really well, and that's a guy that I'd be really happy with in the third round. The first of my like kind of later round guys, is John Bates from Boise State at 6'6", 255 pounds with 32-inch arms. He had 47 receptions for 59 yards and two touchdowns. Now, this is a guy that kind of came on late as a receiver. I don't know if that was he. He, uh, he was part of Zach Ertz's protege sports thing. I know Zach Ertz, like, interviewed him and stuff. I don't know if that led to him, like, with a lot of training or anything. I know he evaluated his gameplay. But 
Regardless, this past season, he went from just being a really good blocker to looking a whole lot better as way more impressive as a wide receiver. Now, like I said, he's been a solid blocker throughout his college career. Like, he he looks good there. But you really like to see that type of advancement. And he, he really did show out this year with some impressive catches. And uh, it just, I mean, he looked a lot better. He's got the perfect size for the NFL. He gets off of blocks and into his routes really quick. He's got good hops and nice body control in the air. That's something he really showed off this year. And those long arms lead to having a big catch radius. Now, this is a guy that showed the solid advancement throughout. I really think he could be a steal in the 6th or 7th round. And, I mean, at that point, a 7th round, that's nothing for a tight end that at least is as good a blocker as him. But he's flashed that upside as a receiver, so... He could be a really solid pick in day three and helps be that third type of tight end, or actually it's only the second type compared to what we already have, but to to give us that blocking with the pass catching upside. Then I got Nick Eubanks from Michigan. I know some of us uh had been up on him. He's a uh, Six foot five, two hundred fifty six pounds. He had forty seven receptions, two seventy eight yards with uh, six touchdowns. He's another guy for me that like I, I wasn't really as impressed with him until as a receiver until this year. I mean, he's never been like a a blocker kind of guy, a high end blocker, but he does well enough, and I think his receiving just. It took a big step up this past season. Now, he's a former four-star recruit. So, I mean, that's always something you look at as kind of impressive for an athlete. But his bigger upsides are, like, he has good speed and agility. He's really smooth. Like, he plays really smooth. He was less productive this year while looking better, though. Like, he had more impressive plays. I think he's got all the physical tools to be good in the NFL. I would like it if he got a little more, like, stick and shake to his routes. Like, he doesn't... Everything's kind of... It's smooth in a good way, but it's also, like, he smooths out his routes in a bad way. Where, like, he he could, you know, kind of stick stick that foot in the ground and shake and drive into the route. You don't see that out of him. I mean, you don't see that out of a lot of tight ends, but just for somebody is his agile and, and quick as he is, seems like something that he could do. Now he's got great body control in the air. When he goes up and gets the ball, like he can, you know, come back to the catch he just has to, and and he's not bad and like contested, but like he needs to show more physicality with uh with his contested catches. And I know I I talked up Hunter Long earlier, and that's one of his gripes. I don't see it personally with him, but with with Eubanks, I kind of do. And another thing is, even like he doesn't turn back and present as good a target to the quarterback like that's something he could definitely it's an easy thing he could work on that would make him a lot better at the next level but otherwise I mean late late round late round guy that I mean yeah he'd be a welcome addition to the team here's one of my later round kind of prototypical tight end kind of guys I got Pro Wells from TCU here. He's six foot four, two hundred and fifty pounds. He had thirty two receptions, four hundred and three yards, and eight touchdowns. He comes from a basketball background. You kind of see that in the way he plays. 
He's got good speed to get open downfield. He comes back and gives a great target to the quarterback. Unlike like what I was talking about, Eubank, it's the reverse of that. This is a guy that will come back off his route and box out and give his quarterback a, a great target. And he's a, he's really he's a competitive contested catcher. Like he shows phys, physicality up there. He's it's it's his ball and he's gonna get it. So he catches through contact because of that. And being a former basketball player, he's got big ups to go up and grab the ball. He's got good lateral movement that helps him with his blocking. Even though it, he's not. He's not like an overpowering blocker, but because of his, I guess from basketball, having the lateral movement, he can stay on blocks, you know, long enough, well enough. He's he's just that kind of, like, kind of what the NFL looks for in a tight end, a receiving tight end kind of. He's, I don't know, he reminds me of Johnny Smith a bit. I mean, he's not like a as freaky physical, I guess, but. I just really like his game, and, yeah, I think he'd be another great guy to add to the squad. My last three guys here are going to be some big boys. They're the tall, bigger tight ends. I mean, some of them are a little lankier, but these are the tall guys. So I I know a lot of DMV area fans are aware of this next guy from playing for the Cavs, but Tony Poljan that played for the Cavaliers, Virginia Cavaliers. He's 6'7", 265 pounds. He had 33-inch arms. He had 83 receptions for 1,129 yards and 12 touchdowns. He had really good production. Now, he's another, he's a, a quarterback turned tight end. And, I mean, that's worked out pretty well for us so far. Like, he was a big athletic quarterback that they were like, hey, you know, it's not working out for you there. Why don't you try your hand out here? So he actually managed to switch over before coming to the NFL. So he got a, a jump on the competition. He's got good strength and he's got great length. To, that makes him pretty good in the blocks. So, like, he's got upside blocking, and he's really tough at the catch point. This year, I think he looked way smoother as a pass pass catcher than he did previously. He uh, definitely improved there. Like, before, I was not at all impressed with this guy. Like, there was a couple guys this year that really – like, stepped it up receiving that made me think, like, oh, wow. Like, he didn't have that going for him last year. And and Tony was definitely one of those guys. So, he's he's got great hops to go with his height, first of all. And he's got a lot of potential to be unlocked. Like, he's he's kind of stiff. If he could learn to be a little more fluid, like, he could definitely be a lot better than he already is. And, I mean, this guy's going to be there in the seventh round, possibly undrafted. So, we could get him for next to nothing. And with our tight end coach, like, we could unlock this guy's true potential. And it could be something, you know, really good. My next guy is also just six foot seven, 250 pounds, 61 receptions. 260 yards, 12 touchdowns. It's Kerry Angeline from, I think he's from North Carolina. This guy is another basketball player or former basketball player. This guy is is smooth for his size. He's a lot more, he's a lot smoother than, than Poljan is. Like this guy... I don't know, I was super impressed by how smooth he was in his routes. And he's, his long strides kind of add up to him being pretty fast past the linebacker level. Like, he's, you wouldn't think of him as, like, being a speedy guy, but he uses his long strides to gain ground quick. 
but he also shows bursts out of his route. So it's, I mean, he's not a bad athlete at all. And he's got great hands. Like this guy, he's got great hands. He catches really well in contact. And he's got big ups from basketball. So it like it all adds up with his his huge catch radius. Like this guy has high potential as a contested catcher and a serious red zone threat. Now he needs to fill out and I mean he's not top tier athlete, but all those other things combine together to give him an advantage. Like I think he's got serious potential and He's another one of those guys that, that probably goes undrafted just because kind of a lack of production and, I don't know, just a stereotype of those, you know, lanky guys being clumsy or something. I don't know. I don't know why he's ranked so low. But, you know, watching this tape, I mean, I was impressed. So, for the fact that you're going to get him for nothing, he'd be a great pickup too. And if these guys... If any of these guys go undrafted, I mean, they're definitely worth worth late round draft picks. But if multiple of these guys go undrafted with uh, just how barren our tight end group is, give them all a call, bring them in. And my last guy here, this is my super sleeper of the draft here. This guy, because he's a division two player. He's most likely, I mean, there's been, there's been articles written though about players taking him, you know, sneaking in there, but, um, uh, he's from Notre Dame of Ohio division two school. It's Zaire Mitchell. He's six foot seven, 260 pounds. And, uh, he's actually a Rockville, Maryland native. So, I mean, that's kind of local the DMV, but I know most, you, know, you got to look at his footage is against division two guys, but he's dominant as a blocker. And then if you just look at the way he moves after the catch, the way he moves in space, I talked about angel line up there being smooth for his size. This guy is the smoothest I've seen at that size. And he's got great speed, too. Like, there's a bunch of plays of him just leaving the whole defense in the dust. And as you would guess, with his size, he has a great catch radius. He's got great speed down the field. And he's got, he's also got special teams upside. Like, this guy blocked, blocked punts he blocked kicks like he could be a special team specialist like he blocked punts he blocked kicked they even had this guy return before because of how smooth and quick he is and i guess he could just mush people but it's crazy that the guy this size returned returned kicks but so he's got that plus value that that ron rivera really likes i mean i would love for this guy to be undrafted free agent or something or if you see in the draft people are just snapping up tight ends for some reason then spend a seventh rounder on this guy or something but i'm i've just been impressed by the tape i've seen on him and i mean he can't hurt you know let's bring in another unknown crazy huge athlete to play tight end here but uh, yeah, that's my video, <laughs> my uh, tight end possible targets for the draft. If you uh, learn anything new about these guys, hey, shoot me a like there, um, comment down below. Let me know if anybody else has heard about Zaire Mitchell, because uh, I kind of I'm kind of a little smitten over him for being a Division Two guy. He's like my version of uh, Quinn Miners at tight end. But, uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Anybody that watched, I love you guys, and peace.